Hey there everyone how's it going Tarun here I'm super duper 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 super duper excited to see you all here So this section or this series is going to be about JavaScript DOM So DOM is nothing but document object model etc etc we will get into it in a moment but before that I want to assure you that watching this series you would be able to get very much comfortable with DOM and using dom all right so this is a very important skill especially when you are a javascript developer because it enables you to do a lot of cool things on the website all right so this is completely uh, related to web development all right the document object model the javascript dom and those of you are here you would have heard about what dom is you would have seen people manipulating dom and all but those who who are new to this dom thing it's okay don't worry this is from the scratch okay and for you all who who know about dom this is going to be a great refresher course okay i'm not going to bore you all with a lot of stuff here i'm going to teach you the basics i'm going to teach you the advanced stuff i'm going to teach you what is essential and then we are going to apply all of that into a project okay and you can find the project or by going online and just type bit.ly forward slash stick hyphen it hyphen notes stick it notes okay and by the way if you open this project on your mobile phone you will also be able to install it and so on so on all right so and yeah let me let us just look at the project which, are, which we are going to do and this is the project which we will be doing at the end of the course where if i add a title and if i add a note it is going to add the note here okay and when you hover over it it is going to have this cool effect and yeah we will be able to delete this not only this this one is also going to be a pwa which is nothing but a progressive web app if you do not know what that is you will learn it in the course it has amazing features like you will also be able to install the app on desktop on mobile on any kind of mobile it's android or ios or anything okay you'll be able to install it and you'll be able to access this website offline how amazing is that so that would be a bonus part of this course okay along with the dom we will be looking at the progressive web app and just an intro to progressive web app already but this course is majorly about javascript dom i'm super excited so let me see you inside the course all right see you there hey there one how's it going tarun here so let's get you excited first by looking at what project we would be ending ending up with with this in this course so if i open this project okay this is a very responsive project which means it's not a responsible project okay it's a responsive project is what i meant to tell responsive project in the sense it works on um any screen okay it works on your laptop it works on your phone etc etc i will show you on my phone but before that let us look at what features we have in this web app okay so this is a progressive web app by the way why why am i telling progressive web app uh there are a few norms of there are few features uh which support uh in progressive web app so you will you will get to know more about that in the progressive web app bonus section of this course but what i mean to tell is in this progressive web app it will run offline okay and it has a beautiful splash screen which i'll show you when i show the demo on my phone and another thing is that it can be installed so if you see this button here okay you will get this button here so if i click install it is going to ask me a prompt where it tells should i install it and if i hit install okay it's going to become an app now how amazing it is okay you have just built a desktop application all right it can be installed on uh, say um, windows or ios or linux or anything okay it just needs a chrome browser or a or a microsoft uh, sorry it's not microsoft or a firefox okay <laughs> or a firefox where uh, it has the feature to install applications so you have this application here it is basically a web app running in uh, like an application okay and there is not much work to that we did here to get get into this point you will know that when we work on the project okay so this is a web app here okay and again there will be shortcut available for the same and 
you can see here we are able to open it okay when i click it and it's going to work and it will work offline also so even on phone it is going to work offline so again on phone it's going to look like this so you can build this and you can just have it on your screen here all right and throughout the day when you have any notes to add in you can add it so you can do like to learn js dom all right so you can create note and you can tell like important links and you can have you can add a link here like bit.ly slash stick it notes okay and you can create a note that it's gonna add the new link here and say one more uh, say to buy you can tell groceries and what else say pen and you can just hit in enter also to enter it here say you had already bought this you can just click it to delete it and it's going to ask you are you sure you want to delete the to buy note okay and you just in hit enter all right so again this works responsibly on desktop and mobile applications so this is with the demo of the uh, desktop part now in the next video i'm going to show you how amazing it looks on my phone all right see you there so we see the url okay go to this url so this is the demo of my phone welcome back uh, and here you see that we have the title the note content and you can create the note here and also in the bottom if you see there was a add it note okay we'll see that later so here what we are doing is here we are typing a new note again the same way the new content and we are going to create the note here okay so yes the note has been created again we are creating another note and so on okay that's done so to delete a note we, we just gave that x button and it got deleted again we are deleting another note again it is deleted all right so here i clicked on add this ticket to my home screen which was there in the bottom so you see that it is adding that to our uh, mobile what you can actually infer here is we are actually installing this application on our phone okay so this is not actually an application it's a web app progressive web app so we have installed the progressive web app and it now looks like an app you can see that we have an icon for that app we have a name you can uninstall it again so on if I go to the app info, you see that the storage used by it is very, very low. It is only 235 kilobytes. That is super low for an application. All right. And now let's close this. Let's go to the application which we built. Let's close all other apps. Let's go to the application. Yeah, we have this ticket. You saw the the splash screen. It's It shows up. Okay, you can choose the color uh, and the text which is going to appear there and here we are again we are typing in the app itself this time it is not the website so we are typing in the app so it is saving it there all right so let's try offline all right so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn my wi-fi off all right and then close the app reopen it we see that the the notes are there okay now let's try adding a new note and by the way again reminding you this is offline all right we don't have the wi-fi there and once we create note it gets created amazingly and again we're going to create some more notes that also works if you can close the app and open it any number of times you need not reconnect to the internet it would still work you can delete the notes so on so on so all of the complete functionality is available offline also this is the magic of pwa and i'm going to show you exactly how we can build this entire project okay we're going to build from scratch don't worry there are no prerequisites here okay just don't worry whatever is needed here i'm going to show you the only prerequisite which might help you is html and css and don't worry about that you can contact me about that i have free uh, free videos available on my youtube also the courses are available on udemy 
you can check them out and reach out to me all right so let's proceed with this and in the next video onwards we're gonna start learning javascript dom and uh, finally we'll end up doing this amazing project each and every step and the entire code of this project is also open sourced on github uh, i'm sure you would have got the link of it by now you can go check it out you can try running it or make modifications if you already know or just wait for me until i teach them and you will be ready to go so all right see you inside the course i'm super excited see you inside Hey there everyone, how's it going? Tarun here. Super excited to see you in this video. In this video, I'm going to tell you what JavaScript DOM is exactly about and what are we going to talk about and what we are going to do in this course, all right? So what is DOM? Okay, so you would have seen this basic uh, web code, okay, HTML code. If you have not, uh, just go look at it or just just look at me doing it here. You have HTML, HTML, head, body, blah, 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 all right? To put it simple, HTML code is wrapped within the HTML tags. It has the head tag, it has the body tag where the main content goes in. Okay, there is H1 and there is P, each of them having its own functionality. All right. So if this is the HTML code, okay, and we are asking the browser to show this code or to render this code in technical terms all right so that is how the user is going to use it right there is a html file and when the user opens it either through his local laptop or to, by going to a website or something that html page is going to load so when it loads the browser builds a document object model okay it builds like a hierarchical structure like this out of this code so what you see here is a representation of this code so let's just go through it so you see that HTML wraps all other elements so it is like the parent of all the elements and its direct children are head and body so its direct children are head and body and body has two children at the same level so okay two children which are h1 and p h1 and p okay so you can imagine this for the other complicated html code right how it will build this document object model all right so what can we do to the dom okay now we have the document object model and so on so on now what can we do with the dom all right so we can change or remove the elements from the dom say you didn't want the p element okay after a certain event has occurred okay when the website is running then you can write code to remove that p all right or or to add a new uh, say an image element then what if you wanted to change or add the css property of the element okay so you can style the elements you can add color you can you can change the background color you can change the font style and you can you can set to whether to display the element or to hide the element so on so on then you then you can read or change the elements attributes like the source the alt the href so on so on so ta so the tags have their own attributes like like uh, for img you have src right and for all for img you have alt also and if, if you take anchor tag which is a you have href all right so you can you can read or you can change the element attributes now the fourth, po fourth point is you can attach event listeners to the elements and make them respond to events say for example you want an image to disappear when user clicks on it you can do that okay or you want something else to happen when a button is clicked you can do that so those are event listeners we will look about all of these in this course so don't worry and the fifth point is you can create a new element and insert it anywhere all right so say you want to create a new uh, say table element and dynamically populate it with all those uh, values you can still do that okay so these are the possibilities with dom which we can do so all of these will be covered in this course and that is all so see you guys in the next video i hope you are as excited as i am so see you in the next video hey everyone how is it going tarun here so in this lecture we are going to look about document object what it is and what are the different methods and functions which are available in that actually really uh, frankly speaking only some of them because there are a whole lot of functions and methods inside that which you will see all right so for that just open any website okay just go to any website or just open this stick it notes application of ours and just inspect it all right
to inspect it just right click and hit inspect we are going to just open the developer tools okay the chrome developer tools or just hit ctrl shift i and it is going to open this chrome developer tools tab this can be done to any of the website okay it can be even done to my blog which is tarunshiv.com okay it is again a gatsby blog so it's a very advanced react based blog and if i hit ctrl shift i okay, it is going to open it all right let's just clear this so here let us look at console.log and let us look at the window object okay so the window objects comes in built in with all the websites which you're going to build you need not specify it during your development it just comes with it so it has several methods it has several objects in it uh, several values and then it also has html uh, what do we call it? html collections okay and the most important ones here are the document object which is below the uh, window window object okay and it has a whole lot of information about your uh, your your website or your document which is loaded here it has all the tags inside it has all the attributes of those particular tags who's the parent element who's the sibling so on so on so on okay now we could look it here or we could do like console dot the not for it dir and hit document okay and we get this and inside this if you see we have we have all these url active elements all anchors which means all those act, uh, collection of anchor tags so on doc type embeds forms again you have a list of forms in the website so extra extra these are the events okay the events in the website here so on so on so this is what you get in console.dir document now getting back to our console.log using that you can actually get the okay using the document object and console.log you can get the various information about these website like do the domain the url the title so on let's look at those so console.log say i want document dot let me copy this part because we're gonna use this a lot so we're gonna use document dot and let's get the domain okay and it's gonna print us www.tarunshiv.com that is the domain we are here we are in so if we if i go to document dot url it is undefined okay why is that should i give it in capitals exactly it should be in capitals so the url gives us the complete path which is including the the whatever the yeah whatever the protocol we are using whether it's whether it's http or https okay along with that it gives us document.url make sure you hit it in the capitals so after that you can also get the title of the website so it is tarun shiv title is nothing but here you can see we have T H R U N S H I V, all right and then you can also get other information like say the doc type the head the body which are the elements okay you can get all those say if you want everything as a collection you just give document dot all and it gives you everything here okay it, it is a html collection of whatever the the tags which are there in this document so that is document dot all okay and by the way if you want to again it is it is a html collection okay it is not an array but still you could do something like how you would do with an array you can grab the zeroth element here just save it and give no no you cannot save it okay and once i hit enter you have document dot all of zero which is the zeroth uh, element which we picked here which is html okay and hence it has given us something about that html inside html whatever we have so on so on so similarly you can pick out whatever you want from the document if you wanted say document dot say if you want say a body you can just hit body if you want forms you can hit forms okay only if there are forms in the in the current page it is going to give you otherwise it's going to give you a empty html collection 
so this is all the notorious stuff you can do using dom okay and using document object in particular okay and one fun particular thing i wanted to show you if you didn't know about it you can right click here click on inspect okay it is going to open up this right and here if i double click here and if i change to say notorious hacker and hit enter it is going to change the website name into notorious hacker okay that is a little fun thing to do but it is not actually hacking because if i reload this page it is going to come back here okay so that is not much editing being done here okay there is not much hacking also being done in the server and all it's just local on your website so that is how all these dom and these chrome developer tools work that was just a fun thing which i showed you and here we learned how we can use the document object to access various information okay again the same thing can be done within a javascript file but i just showed you within the console so that is all for this video and in the next video we're going to look what get element by id is and how you can grab the elements from the website using id see you there Hey there everyone, how's it going? Tarun here. So this is the final code of our project. Hope you all enjoyed this course. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Were you carried away? I was just kidding. <laughs> so this is the final code, okay? Uh, but the course is not anywhere ending. We are just starting off with the course. I just wanted to just play with you. All right, but this is indeed the final code and we will be coding this, okay, entirely, don't worry. But for this video, we are gonna talk about get element by ID. So in this video, we are going to talk about get element by ID. Again, we will be using get element by ID along with the document object. So you use this to grab elements, to get elements from the entire document. Okay. So this get element by ID gets you the element and you identify the element using its ID. So let's look at what ID we have here. So this is our HTML code. Okay. So we have our normal doc type HTML and HTML tag the head within the head we have few meta tags which gives us the character set the title the this is nothing but this is for the font that uh, handwriting kind of font which you, font which you see and here we are linking the style.css and here this is the manifest.json we are including it for PWA purposes and the viewport meta tag is used for uh, say responsiveness okay because even on phone you want it to be uh, viewed really well then you would use the viewport tag and we're ending the head tag and within the body i have a div okay it is a heading div and it has a h1 which is ticket notes and p which is uh, by tarun shiv okay and these have the ids okay the id of heading and this id here is ts all right then we have another div okay which is which spans so much okay and it consists of the input form where we given the input okay which is of uh, type text in the sense it's a text box and it has a class here okay input text and placeholder is nothing but so we uh, there is some text there all right here it is okay there is some text here right? the title and note content which disappears once we start typing okay that is placeholder all right that is a placeholder and this also has a id which is new note title input autocomplete is off because i don't want that uh, suggestions which comes below the those boxes and required in the sense the user must uh, type these before submitting all right and autofocus is nothing but once the page loads i want the cursor to automatically uh, point to this box okay if i refresh you see that that even before i type even before i type or click here that cursor is already there so that i can start typing okay i just wanted that feature so that is autofocus again we have another input box okay which is of class input text type is text and placeholder again and i have an id new note body input autocomplete is off and required okay uh, don't think that i am rushing through this okay i'm not going to teach like this this is uh, this is the way i teach like html in this course because this course is not html course or this course is not a css course right so i'm just walking you through this html thing if you have any doubts please contact me all right 
and then we have this button of the type submit which means that once we click this we want the form to be submitted and class is btn okay again we saw a few ids we saw a few classes just recognize them that's enough and then we have a h3 okay uh, which is shown when there are no notes so it has an id of no notes and you will as a has a id of notes and then we have a script uh, tag where we are importing our myscripts.js and we are ending the body and we are ending the html so since we saw the the ids which we have here let's go to the website and experiment with these ids so let's say we have this uh, let's say we have this ts id let's work with it so i'm here in the browser here let's clear this we are on the website so let us experiment with the ts id so if i tell console.log and if i tell document dot okay get element by id id and make sure you give it as proper uh, these um, capital and small letters and within this we mention the id of the element which we want we want a ts right the ts id element so we just close that again close that and enter okay it gives us the entire element the p element all right it also if you see there it also highlights there when i hover over it so that is the p element which we have got uh, the ts is the id name so using this you can grab any id in the document okay now what we are going to do is we're going to store it inside a variable and we're going to call it uh, it is a para element and we're going to paste this thing here document dot get element by id of ts and hit enter okay it has been stored inside para now if i if i print para okay it is a p p tag all right and it has this content so that is how you grab elements using get element by id and by the way just make sure you memorize this whole thing it is get element by id okay and what we can do here is you can do three things three main things okay uh, of course you can do a lot of things but why i'm mentioning these three things are because these three these three things has to do with the uh, content of this uh, the the element okay now say we have a element here okay let us have a new element here so we saw how we could grab the elements by gra by get element by id right now i'm going to show you how you can use those elements along with few attributes which you can call on them okay and they are going to be text content inner text and inner html okay so we're going to also look at the differences between these three okay in terms of how they show up what is there uh, within the uh, whatever element we are, you're giving okay so for that let's create an element here okay so i have an element here p tag okay id of experiment and there is a break again there is a break break in the sense it's going to give a one line space and you have hello this is and within span tag uh, again i have tarun and how are you okay now this should be rendered onto a web page for that i actually have an extension here which is called live server you can also install it just click on extensions and hit live server okay and that is gonna oops that's gonna give you this list of uh, things where you have this live server and you can click on it and you can install it okay and you would get this live server so then you will have the option here or just right click and click on open with live server so that would open up a, a new link in your default browser let us go to let us open chrome paste it in open that so this is the website and let's open this so i have opened our uh, chrome dev tools Control shift i okay and we have this so we have this hello this is tarun how are you now what i'm gonna do is 
similar to similar to what we did let p equals to get sorry not not directly we have to do document dot get element by the way when you're typing when you get that suggestion and if that suggestion is what you want just hit tab to auto complete so get element by id and i'm gonna get um the experiment the experiment element okay and that is inside p now all right so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna show you first about the inner text because that is the simplest p dot inner text so p dot inner text gives us whatever the complete text is there within that tag just the text part okay it doesn't render the uh, tags inside it doesn't uh, give us the tags also it just gives the entire car this thing so let's go to the extreme end which is inner html okay and when i hit enter that is gonna give you whatever text is there inside along with the tags also which are inside okay there is a span tag and there is this br that is going to be given by inner html so inner text inner html and the last one which i want to show you is text content so p dot text content if i hit enter it is going to render the text uh, that HT, that uh, html tag part there was a br here so it gives a new line again here a new line and the the span tag is not there uh, it, none of the tags will be there but there uh, whatever it can render it will render it S say for instance br is for next line so it has given the next line here and this is how text content is printed okay so this is the primary difference between text content inner text and inner html and based on what you need to do you can use it so if i want to change this say p dot inner inner text equals to if i set something say yeah um doing great and if i hit enter that is going to change it there okay so this is dom manipulation all right so we grab the p element okay by document dot get element by id if we want we can read it okay or we can set a value to it we can tell like p dot inner text equals to something all right so this is how we use get element by id along with text content and inner text so on uh, there is one more thing which you can do where you can change the style of whatever the element you have selected so that you can do by p dot okay style dot and you can choose any style you want say for example color okay p dot style dot color equals to and let me set a color here all right and the color is going to be say yellow not yellow it's yellow so it has set it to yellow did you see that that is how simple it is okay and one more thing which you need to do when setting style is style dot uh, if you remember the background color property in css is background hyphen color right but when using along with javascript dom you cannot use that hyphen thing so wherever that hyphen whichever css style has the hyphen just delete that keep make it make it capital okay and when you give that you're gonna get the property as of now there is no background color so it is showing that so if you want to set it just give keep like that and give white okay it it, it looks awful but <laughs> you get the point right you can set the background color you can do any css style okay but just remember the naming naming convention wherever there is a hyphen it would be changed into a continuous capital letter this is not only for background color this is for all css properties which have hyphens okay if they do not have hyphen you can just directly use this color thing so that is all for this video so we learned a lot about uh, get element by id how you can differentiate between text content inner text and inner html and how you can set the style of any element you grab with the style and about the difference between these kind of properties and the properties which have hyphens by default in css so that is all in this video see you guys in the next video hope you liked it Hey everyone, how's it going? Tarun here. So in this video, we're going to talk about get elements by class name. 
again just focusing on it right now get elements okay it is it comes with that s it is not get element okay by the way get element by id it has element and get elements by class name has elements and you'll know why i'm ta i'm talking like that so when we look at the code okay when are ids used and when are classes used by the way if you didn't know this okay IDs are used for unique elements. So every HTML page should have only one unique ID, but it can have several classes which are of the same name. So if you see here, we have new note title input. You will never find new note title input in this HTML page. But if you see the class, we have class input text. The same class is being used as class input text. And this is the exact reason why we have get elements by class name. So when we use document.getElements by class name, it selects all those elements which has the same class name and returns to us in the form of HTML collection. So let's look at that. Let's go to our Chrome browser. Okay, and that was input text, right? So let's let's remove that part of code. This code here, we do not want that. Let's go here, remove this. Okay, and now let's do let. Okay, uh, let i equals to document dot get elements by class name. All right. And we're going to grab the input text. Uh, was it input text? Okay, it was input and text continuously. So let's copy this, paste it here. And it is input text and when we print i we have a html collection okay it is html collection of length 2 okay it has two elements and within that it has the first element which is of the id new note title input and then the second element which has new note body input okay so this is how it is it's a html collection html collection is again like arrays only it is a collection of elements or like a list it's a collection of elements you can now grab the first element by mentioning i of zero all right when i hit enter it is going to give me this first element which is the the title the ti uh, the place where we enter the title here okay that is the element it returns us again you can do i of one to get the second element okay that is how you deal with um, the html collections so what if we had many HTML collections and you wanted to run them within a loop? You can again do that. So you do that by using a for loop for let uh, let um, x equal to zero x less than i dot length, okay, which tells how many uh, elements are there in that, and x plus plus. All right, and within this loop, we're gonna say x of okay. What shall we change? Let's change the uh, okay x of no no. It's gonna be i of x okay because it is the i of whatever the index zero or one until the length dot style dot border okay border equals to let us set it to three pixel solid red okay and close it come down close the for loop and hit enter to see that the border of these two have been changed to explain you if you didn't know what for loop is it execute this it executes this many times and that many is decided by this factor here 
x less than length and x plus plus so from 0 till length of this thing okay and at each iteration increment it by 1 it is going to do i of 0 dot style dot border and it's going to apply this style and i of 1 dot style dot border and it's going to apply this this thing so this is how you use uh, get elements by class name okay and you can of course apply the text content inner text inner html so on for this also all right so hope you understood what is get element by id get elements by class name okay so if you have any doubts in this please let me know i'm really happy to solve your doubts otherwise let's move on to get elements by tag name and so on See you there. Hey there everyone, how's it going? Tarun here. So in this video, we are going to learn about get elements by tag name. So this is pretty much similar to get elements by class name. And the only difference is this grabs by the tag name and not the class name. Okay. So let's look at it with an example. So we have our sticket notes application here. And if you all do not remember the code, we have this part of the code here and the one we are going to experiment with is the say let's experiment with the the input okay so we have uh, we have one input tag here and another input tag here so we have two input tags on this page so let's experiment with that so now say you want to grab the input element okay and you want to grab all of the input elements no matter how many how many are there on the page by uh, using this get elements by tag name so the way you do that is the same way you just create let i or whatever the variable name equal to document dot get elements by tag name okay and inside this you'll be mentioning the tag say we wanted to get the input tag so we enter and we, we have i if I enter I, I have two elements in it, two, uh, yeah, two items in it, okay, two elements, two items, and it is again a HTML collection. So remember, if it is an X HTML collection, you can again index it. So I of zero will give the first one, and I of one will give the second one because it's zero indexing. Now similar to the get elements by class name, once you have got the element, so just a general note here, once you have got element using any of the selector, okay, it is just an element and you can apply anything on it regardless of how you have got that element, okay, this is like a general note, many of you all will uh, already would have realized that but still for those who have not realized, so we have uh, continue on, continuing here. We have i of 0, i of 1. You can of course do the same thing which we did with the, uh, the the class name. You can of course change the properties here. Say if you wanted to change like i of uh, 0, okay, dot style dot, uh, say what shall we change? Again the, say we'll change the border, okay, equals to, and let's keep uh, 3 pixel dashed green okay and let's hit enter so that is going to change the border of this and it's going to change it to uh, three pixel dashed green all right so that is with get elements by tag name again you can put this html collection into a for loop and do it as we have done in the previous lecture but i will leave that uh, up to you you can do that it is the same it's going to be the same way okay and if you find it difficult please let me know Otherwise, let's carry on with the next tutorial. Thank you for joining. Hey there everyone, how's it going? Tarun here. And in, th and in this video, we're going to talk about query selector. Okay. So what does this query selector do? So we saw about get elements by I get element by ID, get elements by class name and get elements by tag name. Okay. And this query selector is something which is going to do all of them. Okay. And you can, you can employ, like you can get an element by uh, ID or you can get an element by class name or you can get an element by tag name okay but the only thing which you have to remember here is that the query selector is gonna grab only one yes you heard that right so if we use a query selector to get an element by ID of course it's gonna grab one 
but again if you use a query selector to grab an element by mentioning its class name it is going to grab only the first one the first element which it encounters so again we are going to uh, look at it practically onto our example as to how this works all right so let's get into it all right so we have our sticky note applications and the left out part from our previous tutorial let's just refresh all right we have this and let's clear this and for this example okay let's again go back to our code and first let it let us do it with id again let's grab this uh, by tarun shiv okay and it has an id of ts so let's grab it using query selector let us give let ts equals to document dot query selector and here is the catch okay when you are mentioning uh, the id of an element which you want to grab okay just include this hash symbol okay and then mention the uh, the the id okay mention the id so hash and ts so close it and hit enter and when i print ts it is going to give that p tag okay so that is how you grab by uh, element okay when you want to use this query selector to grab an element by id that is how you do it again now as i told you in previous tutorials since we have grabbed that element we can do anything with that you can tell ts dot style dot uh, whatever color equals to hello ts dot style yeah it would still work okay so this would work but this lesson is all about how to grab the elements using query selector so let's focus on that so we have grabbed it using id now let us try grabbing it using class name all right so we had this let ts equal to query selector let's just edit this to grab the input elements okay and that is going to have a class right let us look at what class our input elements have so our input elements have a class of input text input text now let's grab this input element and see if we get a html collection of uh, hit, uh, input elements or something okay let's try that again to mention classes you will have to use full stop first okay and input text which is the class name let me hit enter it has grabbed it and as i uh, okay type i i have not hit hit enter it is telling me what it has grabbed okay it has see it has grabbed only the first input element okay so that is the functionality of query selector it is going to grab only the first one let me hit enter and if i do i dot style dot um, background color not so sure because it's just a text box so border equals to two pixel solid black okay and it has a black border it is not that visible because it is of the black color okay so it has a black border and i is just one element it doesn't have the complete two input elements okay so by the way if you are wondering the, that the query selector only returns at as one and does not return as two or more uh, what you say elements in it say last time when we were using get elements by class name or get elements by tag name we were getting two or more uh, elements right but this time we are not getting it and if you're wondering how we are going to get that so i have answers exactly for you in the next video so in the next video we will be talking about something special which can help you grab any number of items okay and which is similar to query selector so see you guys there if you have any doubt please feel free to ask me thank you for joining hey there everyone how's it going tarun here so in this video we're going to learn, we'll learn about wait wait is it again query selector absolutely it is going to be again query selector before before moving on to the next special topic in this video i want to show you some extra cool stuff which you can perform using query selector the previous video was just the basics of using query selector but in this video we're going to look about uh, the more advanced stuff which you can do using query selector so let's jump into it 
So in this video, I'll be showing you three cool things which you can perform using this query selector. So first again, let's go back to the code for those, who, those of you who are directly jumping into this tutorial. Again, let's experiment with this input input uh, tag because we have the same class for two input tags. So we have input uh, class equals to input text and again uh, class equals to input text. All right. And for the sake of this tutorial, let's change this button into input type equals to submit and class equals to btn let's save and go to the website and reload it okay it still remains the same but one more little thing we need to change we have to grab this and value equals to create note and we'll have to remove this part of the input tag because input tag ends like this so now when we go back and when we reload we have it all right let's clear this so now in the changed code we have three input tags okay two of those input tags are of type text okay and one of those input tag is of type submit all right now what if there was a situation where i wanted to grab the input tag which had the type submit okay let's see how we can do that so we want to grab this okay so using query selector the way you would do that is let submit equals to document dot query selector all right and within that you would mention the tag you want to grab all right the input tag we want to grab that and within this square braces, you would apply that condition that we want the type to be equals to submit. Okay. Now just close it, close that, hit enter. Okay. Let me see because, okay, we have the type equal to submit. It's not submit by the way, it's submit, right? So let's just clear this. And now when we do, ah, oh, we get it. So this button highlighted the last time we had the type as submit, so it didn't work. And this time we had it as submit and it works. So yep, we have grabbed the submit button by mentioning the uh, condition in here. So we have grabbed by tag name and in that tag name, we have given the condition using which it should be grabbed. Okay. So this is one of the way which ways in which I want to show you how we can use the query selector. Now the next way in which we can use it is you can grab the last element. Okay. In, okay. Now say we, we are grabbing by class, right? When we are using uh, get elements by class, you will have a HTML collection of elements. What if you wanted to grab the last element? Okay. And you want to do it with query selector. The way we, we would do it is let last element equals to document dot query selector dot okay again now we are going to grab by class now okay and this class name was input text right the class name of this thing input text and we want to grab the last element or just just let's do it for the input tag okay so it would be um, here let us select this it would be the input tag okay the input and let it be of any uh, any input tag in the page okay and i would mention the colon and tell last hyphen child all right and then close the braces and hit enter and once i complete the last element it points to the button so we have grabbed the last child. I told you, right, Dom is full of parents, children, uh, siblings, so on. So it has grabbed the last child, okay, in that input. So we have grabbed that. So this is the second thing which I wanted to show you where you can grab the last child. Again, as you all know, the general rule, once you grab the element, you can apply any style on it. Okay, so that's, I leave that up to you. And the third and the last thing which I want to show you in this video is about 
how you can get grab the nth child okay so we have grabbed the first child we have grabbed the last child what about the other middle ones so here we are going to learn how you can grab the other middle ones so for that let say we are going to grab the second element right uh, second let second element equal to document door query selector and we're going to use input again input it's going to be and colon okay mention int hyphen child i don't think we can name it like this it is throwing some error let us have it like two two element okay it's going to be two element and document dot query selector input okay nth child okay and here you'll mention the uh, what number of child do you want okay let us mention two and close it and hit enter and as i type two element it is going to give us the second child here okay and by the way do not confuse this with array indexing okay array indexing starts with zero but this nth child starts with one so if i give nth child of one it is going to grab the first element if I give nth child of 2, it is going to grab the second element like that. So we have given 2 and we have got the second element. So this is the third syntax which I wanted to show you which we can use here with query selector. All right. So that is all for this video and next video as I promised we are going to look at how you can grab all the uh, class items. Okay. And what is the syntax for that. So see you all in the next video. I'm super excited and within a few more videos we'll be starting off with the project also. So see you all there. Thank you. Hey there everyone, how is it going? Tarun here. Super excited to meet you in this tutorial because we're going to learn about query selector all. Yes, this was the mystery tag which I was telling you where you can grab all the elements. Alright, so let us start experimenting with it. So if you all remember we had done query selector, okay, and using query selector we weren't able to grab all the uh, class elements say if we had to grab like all the input text we weren't able to get it all it only gave us the first element with query selector but using query selector all you can follow the same syntax but it is going to give you all of them so let us clear and okay clear doesn't work like this let's clear here all right all right now what we're going to do is let all right let and let us grab all the input elements so let i equals to document dot query selector all okay and we're going to type input because it's going to be all the input tags all right so do it like that and hit enter and hit i you see it is a node list all right it is not a HTML uh, collection, but it is a node list. So let us try grabbing the i of 0. And we have got that. So i of 1. And we have got that. So this is how it returns to you the query selector all. And the same applies for class also. So if I had done the same thing and given it the class. So to mention class, I would use dot. Okay. And input text because that is the class remember and hit enter all right and when i give i it gives a node list and it is of the length two elements because only these two have the classes uh, input text so this is how you would use query selector all and do it and by the way for a fun thing let us try uh, a new trick which i want to show you all right so what if you wanted to, okay, let's have a few more, okay, for fun. Let's come here. Uh, let us copy this. Okay. And con uh, shift alt down arrow key. It will du uh, duplicate down and give me two more. All right. So we have this. All right. Let it have, let's go here and reload. So we are going to have four input boxes. Okay. So what if we wanted to, okay, we, let us have some more uh, input boxes. All right. So it's a crazy uh, customer form. 
is going to have so many uh, uh, input boxes all right so let's clear it so what if i wanted to have uh, every so what if i wanted to have every even item in this uh, whatever the input text fields to have a border of a certain style okay so how will i apply that so the way we can do that is let us tell let even equals to document dot query selector all okay and i'm gonna grab all the dot input text that is all the elements with the uh, class input text okay but there is one more small thing which i'm going to do here that is i'm going to give it a condition to pick it up with the nth child of even okay and let us close this and hit enter and if i type even it is of node list 4 that is it has it has picked up four elements in it okay so we have four elements so as of now we cannot make any difference in it so let us apply style to know what the differences are so again let's like a, write a for loop for let i equal to 0 or or for even more fun okay let us go with uh, so what is the name of this list it is even right so let us do even dot for each okay even dot for each and it would grab each and every uh, node okay it will grab each and every node and it will apply uh, it will do a particular thing to it so let us do node dot style dot all right node dot style dot border okay it is going to be equal to let us apply three pixel dashed green close this and again close that and hit enter boom that is the magic it applies for every even element okay it gives that three pixel dashed green style okay and by the way if you do not know this syntax of for each uh, i teach uh, all of the basics to advanced concept in my javascript es6 modern course all right uh, if you did if you did not know about it please ask me i am ready to give you the link for it so there we have learned about this okay so the for each which means that iterate for each and every element of this so in each and every iteration it is going to get the node okay and this is a arrow function syntax so in the arrow function this is going to be the uh, parameter the node is going to be the parameter so for each node in in every iteration it's going to take that node uh, go to the style property and border property and apply that okay this is going to it is going to apply for each item inside even and the even node list contains four items because we grabbed only the nth child even all right hope you got this so this is how uh, we do another fun thing using the query selector all and uh, including this nth child even and using the for each loop all right so that is all for this video if you have any doubt please feel free to ask me otherwise see you guys in the next video thank you hey there everyone how's it going tarun here so until now you've learned a lot of concepts like say get element by id get elements by class name get elements by tag name all right and then we saw how you can use query selector and query selector all and how you can grab the nth element, uh, nth child where you mentioned the two uh, and you grab the particular element, so on, so on. All right. And once you grab the element by any of these means, how you can apply few styles to it or how you can change the inner text or the inner uh, inner HTML or the text content, so on. So what you're going to do now is first of all take a website all right or build a small html project or uh, get this uh, project which i have given in this uh, course and just go uh, go to the uh, chrome developer tools by hitting ctrl shift i or right click in inspect element and try experimenting with things look at what tags are there what uh, classes are there and try grabbing them and try applying few particular styles to 
and try grabbing them try applying particular styles or changing the text so on okay that would be a great practice before moving on all right for those who are uh, confident with it let us move on so here we're going to talk about traversing the dom okay so what do you mean by traversing traversing in the sense you're going to move along in the in the dom okay so it's going to be either from a child to the parent or uh, among the siblings or from the parent to the child so on okay there are you can traverse in any way you just uh, get hold of an element and just move up down left right all right so yeah so that is crazy so in this a uh, video in particular we're going to look about parents and children okay so let us begin with it so we have our stick it notes all right and let us look at the structure of the code once again so that you get a good idea of where we are so here we have several uh, input tags right let us close this so i have closed this here okay within this form so we have several input tags in here and so all of these elements the input okay and along with the another input these are all siblings okay and this input and this form they have a parent child relationship so this is a parent of all these children all right you get that right so if an element wraps an, an another element within it then it becomes the parent of that element all right and if two elements are on the same level then they are siblings so this is one basic thing which you need to know all right and after that now what we're going to do is we're going to take this input text and we're going to find out who the parent element is okay and here we can see that this form with id of input form is the parent element so let us try doing that let's go back to our chrome browser and let us first get our input element which is equal to document dot query selector document dot query selector and within that we're going to give input text okay and we have grabbed the input so let us try printing the input it is of null because there is no tag by name in oh, wait wait so let us first grab the element okay and since we are going to use uh, in uh, the query selector we are going to grab only one element so let us grab it so let input equals to document dot query selector and within that we are going to give the class name which is input text okay enter and as we type input we see that we have selected that first one let's hit enter okay that is input element now we want to grab the parent element of this so let's type let input parent equals to input which is the element dot parent element hit enter and as i type input parent you can see that it shows here uh, where was it okay it it is this so it shows on the left hand side that it is form and input form the whole thing so it has got the parent element by mentioning just the parent element okay so this is how you get the parent element now as the general rule of this course goes once you have grabbed an element you can apply any style on it or change any properties of it so this pa input parent is having the entire form you can apply any styles to it or any en you can change anything all right so that is fine now we have the input parent now what if we wanted the children of the input parent the way we would do that is i already told it it is children only so let children of input parent equals to input parent dot children and enter and when i hit children input parent we have 9 because if you remember here we have eight input of the type text 
and one more input of type submit so it has grabbed all the children here and it is of type HTML collection so again you can do indexing on it that is to grab the second element or the third element you can again uh, use the indexing of which starts from zero remember it indexing starts from zero for HTML collection alright so again you can grab the particular children by using children of say say we wanted the uh, the, the fourth one so you would say three and hence you have grabbed the fourth one here alright and you can store it in another variable and again change the properties so we saw how you can get the parent element and how you can get the children okay in this video and two more things which we are going to see in this video is how you can get the first element okay the first child element and the last child element okay the way you do that is we have input parent right so input parent dot okay we're gonna grab the first element child which will give us the first element okay and let's go down input parent dot last element child is gonna give us the the last element here okay which is the input of type uh, submit which is a button here you can see that okay so this is how you use the parents uh, parent element the children the first element child and the last element child so this is how you traverse the DOM and in case you're wondering uh, I told you traversing and you can still move so how I'm gonna demonstrate that is the last one which I'm gonna tell you is we see here we have the input element right let input of query uh, query selector so in our code if you see the parent of this form is div and the parent of this div is body so let's try traversing to the body okay from the input from the input here okay the input is input text so let us go to input text dot parent element okay, it is not input text it is just input dot parent element dot parent element okay again dot parent element and hit enter it gives us the body tag okay because the first parent element took us to the form and the second parent element took us to the div and the third parent element took us to the body so this is the way we traverse again from one single element to the straight roof uh, rooftop okay so hope you understood uh, this thing okay if not please try to rewatch this video and the most important part is practicing this on any website which you take all right just practice how you can grab elements so just take an element and try traversing to any other elements all right you'll be able to do it don't worry and the traversing doesn't stop here in the next video we're gonna uh, watch about the siblings how you can uh, traverse through the siblings okay so dorm is actually a pretty exciting uh, topic to teach and also to learn and also to apply so see you guys in the next video thank you so much for joining Hey there everyone, how's it going? Tarun here and in this video we're going to talk about how you can create elements, how you can insert the elements, how you can append elements with each other and how you can set attributes of those elements completely. Alright, so let's jump into it. So this is our code and as usual if you are new to this tutorial, I mean jumping directly into this tutorial then you might want to look at this code. So we have a div, another div within which we have a form and this form consists of uh, a couple of input uh, a couple of input buttons and input tags and then you have a button all right to create the note so we have h3 and you have ul all right and the notes which we create is going to go wait sorry the notes which we create is going to go within the The nodes which we create are gonna go within this uh, this UL, okay, which is an unordered list, all right. And each and every list item is gonna be a uh, note, okay. That's how we're gonna structure this application. So now, what if we wanted to create an element and insert it somewhere here, all right? 
So okay, okay. Say that we want to create a a p tag here. All right, at this place, and say we wanted to give a little bit description about our application. Then if you wanted to do it dynamically, okay, in the using JavaScript. All right, then you will be using the method which I'm showing you, where you can create element and insert element uh, at the point of time where you want. Okay, it need not be static here. So for that, let's start coding it here itself. All right. Um, and by the way, uh, if you do not know how I got here, I clicked on the live server here. All right, and then opened it with Chrome. All right, and hit Control Shift I or Inspect to open up this window. All right. And then I'm here. I can type any JavaScript here, and it will execute on this page. All right, so that's cool. So now what I want to do is I want to create a p tag. So how do I do? So let say para, or let's give new para equals to document dot. Okay, create element. Okay, using this method, you'll be able to create element, and within this, you have to give the e the element which you want to create. If it is p, you give p, or h1, or say if you want to create a div, you'll you would tell div. All right. So for this, you need basic HTML knowledge. So whatever tag you want, you would enter the tag name here. For now, we want to create a p tag. Okay, so p. And hit enter. We have a new para, okay, which is a p tag. If I show you that, okay, it shows it is a p tag. All right, new para is a p tag. Now what we want to do is we want to add a class name to this tag. Okay, let's add a class name. How do we add a class name? For that we take we take new para dot class name. Equals to, and we can give any class name. Say we wanted to give, um, say, decorable is the class name. Okay, any class name. So it is a decorable class name. So new para has a uh, class name of decorable. Say we want to add many classes to this. Then what you would do is new para dot class list. Okay, equals to, and you would give a list of classes. And say the first one could be decorable, and the second one can be active. Okay, and hit enter. It creates a new class list. So if you want to see the classes of this uh, paragraph, you can click new para dot class list, and it's going to give you a DOM token list which has decorable and active. Okay, so these are the classes in this. Uh, new para, okay. And say you want to add an ID to this paragraph. The way you would do is new para dot ID equals to whatever the ID you want to give. Say it to for it to be unique, you would say header para. Say this is an ID, so it will have an ID of header para. All right. So now, uh, since it is a paragraph, uh, you don't have much attributes to it. All right. So one one of the attribute which we can try is title. Okay, so title is where when you hover over it, you will get a title, or uh, you'll get a hovering effect over it, a title. So let's try that. So new para dot set attribute. Okay, and you can hit title and say this is the hovered title of the paragraph. All right. As of now, we're not going to see that because we haven't displayed the paragraph element into the page. All right. We are just setting attribute. So attributes are nothing but say um, you have many attributes, right? Like href is an attribute. Then you have style, which is an attribute. Or for images, say you have alt, which is an attribute. Okay. So on. And src is an attribute. Okay. You can you can mention the key of the attribute here and the value of the attribute in the next. Argument, all right. So that is how you set attribute. So the next thing is, now we have a p. Okay, we want to create some text 
node inside right inside p we want some text inside so you cannot just directly uh, append the child or something the text you have to create a text node and then append it all right so the way we do that is var okay let's tell new para text equals to document dot create text node okay and within this you give the text so we'll be like this is an application where you can add your notes and save them offline okay and hit enter now the text node is created all right now what we need to do is we have to append this text node to the paragraph because we want the paragraph to be the parent of this text node right so once you look at the output you will get uh, even more clear if you, in case you are uh, unclear now okay so what we have to do is we have to append it into the new para so how you do is new para dot okay new para dot append child because it's going to be the child so append child you hit new para text and hit enter this has been appended to the new para all right and now what we want to do is we want to grab one of the element okay and set and set this element relative to it so here if you see we have form we have form and we have heading so we want to insert here okay so since we want to insert here what we can do is we can grab the body okay and we have to make this as a child of body but where would we add it okay for that what we need to do is we'll have to uh, grab the body all right and grab the form okay and we can tell like insert the element before the form okay let's let's follow that so here what we need to do is let's grab the body so let body equals to document dot query selector and type body and we would have grabbed the body all right now what we want to do is we want to grab the let form equals to document dot query selector and let's grab the form which has the id form okay so we have grabbed it now what we have to do is we have to do body dot okay insert insert before okay and we have to tell that we need the new para to come before our form and hit enter you see our form has been inserted successfully here okay and when i hover over it it shows this is the hover title of the paragraph which means the attribute also has been set and you can see here we have the class decorable and active and then you have the header para and then you have the this is the hover title of the paragraph and you have the text node which we have appended as this is the application where you can add your notes and save them offline so this is how you create element you insert the element into the uh, thing okay and then you can also set the class id you can access the class class list you can set the attributes and you can create the text node okay and the method which we followed stands and holds good for almost all the elements all right so have this idea and try things and when you get doubt uh, please feel free to reach me out so that is all for this video see you all in the next tutorial hey there everyone how's it going tarun here and in this video it is a part 2 of traversing the dom and we are going to talk about siblings so what do you mean by the general term siblings in english we refer to it like uh, our brother or our own sister as siblings right so technically speaking they are ones who are at our same level all right so in the same way in the dom tree if you see here okay siblings are the one who are at the same level now if you uh, if you look at this structure here 
The head and the body are siblings. The H1 and P are siblings. All right. So these are siblings. Those who have one common parent. You can put it that way also. So in this video, we are going to demonstrate what are the tags you have, which you can use to refer to the siblings. All right. So this is our uh, sticky notes code as usual. So for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the form. Okay. As usual using the query selector or get element by ID. Okay. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to grab its sibling, which is this heading. Okay. And we're going to grab the child of the heading, which is the first element child of the heading. And then we're going to print out whatever is there in this. All right, or we, or let's try changing it. All right, anything is fine. So let us begin. So we have this ID form. Okay. So first of all, we need to grab this uh, element. All right. So let's go to our stick it notes console. Okay. And var, and we need the form equals to document dot query selector and within quotes you want to grab the form okay so this will give us the form element it gives us the complete form all right now what we're going to do is bar okay now we're going to get the previous element or let's say sibling the sibling of form can be got by um, form dot previous element sibling okay so here what what we notice is the the element which we want to grab okay this heading element is previous to the form hence we are using previous element sibling if it was after this form okay if we had if we had to grab say this h3 Okay, then we would be using instead of previous element sibling, we would be using next element sibling. All right. So for sibling things, you have two things here. Okay, previous element siblings and next element siblings. Here, since we plan to use the previous element, let's use let's go with the previous element sibling. Okay. So what did we do here? So var sibling equal to form dot previous element sibling enter. And when we, when I print out sibling, we get the heading. All right. So after this, of course, you know, our general rule of this course, once you get the element using any of the tags or any of the method, you can do whatever you want with them. So you can do like sibling dot first element child dot say inner text equals to stick note enter and you saw it changed and the way we changed was we grabbed the form element we found the previous sibling okay using previous element sibling and for refreshing, if you, if it is a next element, you would tell like pre uh, next element sibling. Okay. And once you grab it, you can, as usual, apply the, uh, the, the attributes or the properties, which we have studied. Okay. Like inner text or, uh, you can change the style and so on. All right. So that was all about this video. So this much is really good knowledge about siblings. So in the next video, we're going to look about how you can create element and how you can insert elements. Okay. New elements into the uh, web page. So see you there. Hey there everyone. How's it going? Tarun here. And in this video, we're going to talk about events. So what are events? So events are nothing but they signify the occurrence of something. All right. So something has occurred on our page like say the user has clicked on our element or he has passed over our element or he has selected our element so on so on there are there are plenty uh, of events out there i'll show you them but before that we need to know what events are and you need to know what event listeners are so what are these event listeners okay so they are like 
functions which keep listening all right so event listeners are functions which keep listening for how long for however long okay the the as long as the page is open the event listeners are going to keep listening and what would happen is so when a particular event happens okay this particular event listener is going to fire and whatever functionality you have mentioned within that event listener is going to get executed so that is with event and event listeners so if you are still unclear just watch this over once again or just jump into the example which i am going to show you now to get more clarity all right let's jump into the code so we have our sticky notes application here so let's have a button here okay let's say button and it's going to be type equals to button and it's going to have a on click okay which is going to be an event okay on this on click event so click is the event we they just append that on when you use it inside html tags okay so on click we are going to uh, fire a function say um, button clicked okay and call that function and close it and tell click me all right so this is a button and let's give it a class of btn for it to look good so let's copy this and paste it here okay save it and the button should have appeared by now let's refresh this page reload okay we have this click me button here and we have to write this function button clicked let's go to the javascript code but before that you have to know how you can link javascript uh, files to the html file for that you'll have to write this script tag and uh, make sure you write it within the body okay you can also write it within the head okay two places and so here what we're going to do is script and src equal to it's going to be the path in which the javascript file is and this is relative path if you don't know what relative path is you'll have to mention the path relative to this file so if it is there within a folder inside this folder say within the javascript folder of this folder you would mention javascript forward slash my scripts dot js all right so make sure you give the right path otherwise uh, it it will not work so let's go to my scripts dot js and let's write the function function and the function name is button clicked and within this function what we want to do is alert that the button is clicked okay save it let's go to our page and reload our page and when i hit click on click me you see that this pop up comes up the alert shows up that the button is clicked all right so this is one way in which you can mention the uh, the events okay you can mention it within the uh, the html tag itself on click on select uh, so on so on whatever the event listeners are there out there but this is not the recommended way okay the recommended way is to use add event listener or to use event listeners all right so let us look at how we can do that so since we have linked our uh, myscripts.js to our html page we can write the code here itself instead of writing on the uh, what to say the so called console which we have on the chrome so what i i'll do now is i'll do let okay so let uh, event listener or even without declaring it okay let's just tell document dot okay get element by id and give the button a unique id say let's give id equals to test okay so let's grab the button by test all right dot add event listener okay and here you'll have to mention what event you want so it will be like click or select or uh, so on so on okay and it won't be on click that on click on select and all will come only within the html tags here you have to mention it just as an event so add event listener click and the second argument here will be the function which you want to execute so here you can directly write a function 
like an anonymous function you can write it here or okay let, let, let us try both okay so let's write the same thing here save okay and now we'll remove that on click see the on click has been removed all right so let's remove this also and let's go to our website and reload for a button to appear and once i hit click me it again shows that alert button okay but this time it's with event listeners so as i told you what i'm going to show is let's take this function off and write a separate function and give it a name uh, called say button button clicked and let's copy that and paste it in here make sure you don't uh, use round brackets here to call it just use button clicked and then refresh the page and when i click on click me it it again shows up so this is the way this is the way you use uh, events actually this is a very efficient way of using uh, events so you just mention the event to the event listener and actually append it with this uh, element whichever you want to listen to and you mention the function which has to be called so there's the function and you can mention the functionality which has to go within this so now as i promised you i'm going to show you different events which are available in javascript so if i go to this website okay w3 schools and this dom object event i'll make sure i uh, deliver you the link to this okay you can find it in the resources so here you can see a lot of events abort after print blur okay change uh, click okay double click okay uh, then you have drag drop focus so many events okay like mouse down mouse enter mouse leave and similarly you will have uh, key down uh, key up also okay so you have so many uh, events here so these are the events which you can use okay and you can attach a function and do a specific functionality when this event occurs and the way you do that will remain the same the syntax is the same only this part will change so it's time for you to play with events okay <laughs> so make sure you build something small using this event something funny or something interesting and share with us i would definitely love to look at what you come up with so that is all for this video and we saw about event listeners event and how you can add this add event listener to an element so in the next video we'll be looking at how you can pass event parameter okay it is quite important one especially when you deal with forms so see you guys there hey there everyone how's it going tarun here and in this video we're going to continue with events but now we're going to talk about the e which is the event parameter which we are passing okay and how important it is okay now what we're going to do is first of all create again an event listener which which listens to a button which is being clicked all right so let us uh, look at let us first go to our code all right let us go to my scripts.js uh, we'll remove this part okay and we'll comment all of the code you can do that by control a to select everything and control forward slash to uh, comment all the code now the functionality of our website is completely dropped okay and now what we're going to do is let's remove this button okay save it and we have this form here all right and we have this button uh, type submit class btn let's give an id to the button okay and the id is going to be uh, btn submit okay btn submit so let's go into this uh, place again and what we're going to do is we're going to create an uh, an event listener okay so before that let's write uh, no um we need not write the function let's create the event listener now let's just create the event listener so document dot uh, let's say get element by id and we're going to pass in btn submit okay so it has got that uh, button dot and we're going to add an event listener event listener all right and that event is going to be click all right 
and the function which we are going to call is going to be function we're going to write it here itself okay and this is going to be a function and within the function let's just console dot log clicked okay hit enter tells cannot read property add live int listener of null okay why is that document dot get element by id btn submit let us uh, copy this okay refresh the page clear it write it down and hit enter all right the page wasn't uh, refreshed okay so now we have added an event listener and once i click this it gives clicked okay and any number of times it shows clicked so reload the page so we have this thing now it is being clicked now what i want to do is by default this thing receives an event parameter here e okay we need not pass anything there but it receives e which is really powerful so let me console.log e now okay let us hit enter and when i hit when i click on create note this e has been console.log and when you see inside this it shows a lot of stuff alt key bubbles okay and cancel bubble client x client y and a lot more okay and one thing which we are going to see look at immediately is this target which shows us okay which shows us who has called this event so what we could essentially do is we could have many tags call the same uh, same event listener function and based on this e dot target we can decide on what action we want to do all right so that is also possible so essentially this e dot l e dot target gives us the actual element which was clicked okay or who uh, or whatever element fired this event all right so using this e dot target you can do a lot of stuff so one such thing which we are going to see is we are going to do e dot target dot you can grab the id you can grab the class name or you can grab the class list you can grab the type etc etc so let's start with id so e dot target dot id and when i click on create note e is not defined that is because we haven't given e there so let's copy this and make sure you mention e within this function and hit enter now when i click create note uh, it tells again e is not defined all right so let us reload this page okay refresh this page clear the console hit enter go inside e all right then we have e dot target dot id uh, hit enter and click on create note we get the id we get it as btn submit okay so that is the id now if you want to check what the class is then you just tell e dot target dot class with of course e in here and hit enter and when i hit when i click create note it is going to give btn submit as the class which is wrong right so since it's giving wrong results what we're going to do is we're going to clear we're going to refresh and each time we are uh, going to show the output we're going to reload the page okay so let's give e dot target dot class and e hit enter and when i click on create note it gives undefined why is that because it is not just class it is class name okay so by the way since it was showing wrong results what we're going to do is essentially every time we run we're going to refresh the page clear the console and paste it in and we're going to grab the class name okay e dot target dot class name hit enter and when i click on create note it is going to give us the class name which is btn and which is correct all right so you can again grab the class list you can again tell the type okay that which shows you the type of the event let's reload the page and paste it in and e dot target dot type and hit enter and once i click on create note it is going to give submit so it is of type submit right 
so that is what it tells now one more amazing thing which you can uh, do with, with with this e dot target is that you can get the exact uh, mouse position where it was clicked okay let me show you that let me reload the page clear this paste it in and what you can use is you can use e dot target uh, no not the target okay you can get you can do e dot client x okay which gives us the uh, x axis coordinate which is from the left okay and you can print in comma let us give a space and let's print e dot client y which gives us the y axis coordinate of the mouse point and that would be from the top okay let's hit enter cannot read event, event listener of okay let's just copy this reload the page clear this paste it in hit enter and when I click on create note it is going to give 52 237 and when I click here it is going to give 72 uh, 262 and when I click here it is going to give that coordinate so on okay so it gives us the coordinate where this click was done of course it doesn't work outside but within the button it gives the coordinate so one uh, one fun project which you can do is based on where the user is clicking on the screen you can show a specific color you can generate a random color so take this as a challenge and let me see who comes out with the answer for this question okay so the task is based on where the user clicks on the screen okay you have to set the color of any of the button or uh, a div or anything with a particular color okay and that can be of course that can be random but it should be based on where the user is clicking so you have to get the uh, coordinates of the uh, x and y axis and use those numbers to generate the color let me see how you do that all right so there are a few more uh, amazing things you can do with this uh, event so what if you have a feature in your website where you want something to be done when this button is being clicked using the control button I mean by holding the control button so I hold the control button and I click the button I want something to happen or I hold the alt button and I click the button something should happen or I hold the shift button and I click the button something should happen now how do I handle that so let us clear this console uh, by clicking here reload this page alright and let us uh, paste it in here and what we're going to do is we're going to check here if the control key or uh, control key has been held when clicking on the button so you can check that by using e dot c t r l key and hit enter now when i click it normally it tells false when i when i hold the control and, and i click it is going to tell true okay this is without holding it when I hold it it's going to tell true similarly for alt key it is e dot a l t key and for shift key it is s h i f t key so using this you can figure out if the user is clicking the button using control alt shift either of these and you can use if statements to filter these out in your function all right so this is one thing which you can do with event and the most important uh, the most important application of this which we are going to use is e dot prevent default so the way you do that is let's clear this let's clear the console reload as the page and here what you do is e is there right so you just use this e dot prevent default okay hit enter and when I click on it, of course, it's not going to do anything. But the point here is, uh, of course, we should not be uh, logging it out. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this, the previous code. Okay, remove the console.log. And the code is going to be like e dot prevent default. 
So usually when you submit a form, okay, what happens is uh, usually it, it finds that action part in the form and it submits to the uh, action page, okay? And most of the times this results in uh, reloading the page, all right? So if you do not want that default activity, what you would do is you would write e dot prevent default, okay? And once you write this e dot prevent default, what would happen is the default action of submitting the button uh, would not happen and the page will not reload okay and this is mostly used within the forms and in the project which we do later you're gonna observe that uh, we'll be using e dot prevent default along with the form okay and this is one thing which you're gonna see a lot being used e dot prevent default especially with forms okay so that is all for this video there are few events which I showed you in the previous video you can go through those uh, events okay and you can use them with this uh, add event listener say for example mouse down is when the, the event occurs when the user presses the mouse button over an element or mouse enter is when the event occurs when the mouse pointer is moved onto an element okay mouse leave is when when the pointer is moved out of an element okay so there are many events to play with here so you can use these and you can try uh, you experimenting with how they work okay so that's gonna be pretty fun okay and yes, and few interesting ones here are like key down key press key up which has to do with the keyboard keys so once someone starts typing you can uh, you can fire an event and do something all right so you would have seen right on these websites and all when you as you start typing they tell you if your password is of strong or weak or very strong so on so how do they do that with events only so as the user is typing they fire this key down or this key press or this key up event and they read the content of the input of the input box okay or the value of the input box and then they use the functions to validate if that user is uh, entering a strong uh, password okay so that is how again events are used in real world applications so that is all for this video if you have any doubts please feel free to ask me otherwise we'll be moving on to the next video see you there